Hey YouTube, this is uh, Chris from Universe X and welcome back. So um, now that it's been a full day and a half, a little more to uh, digest these cards, we're actually going to get into the feature rares on this channel. Um, <clears throat> everybody's already talking about applications and whatnot, but of course, like, what would I be on this particular venue if I wasn't going over these myself? So we're going to hop right into it. First things first, uh, the set's called Destroy Your Kings, and right now we're about to get some of these Destroy Your Kings in action. Um, these are cool because these effects don't have to be with their archetype, but they work really well with their archetypes. Um, except the first one because he doesn't really have an archetype. Point being, first card we're going to get onto is Vegeta, Agent of Destruction. Um, Auto, when you play this card, choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards with 25,000 power or less and KO it. Activate main once per turn, one blue, one colorless. As your If your leader card is red, this card gains plus 10,000 power, double strike and dual attack for the turn. Okay, so I don't think anybody really needs to, like, it's almost a no-brainer. It's a complete no-brainer. Um, this is a Super Saiyan 3 Vegeta, Majin Vegeta, which is like one of the coolest things that you could possibly want if you're a Vegeta fan. And um, other than, you know, plot relevance, but then again, I'm a Gohan fan, what do I know about that? Um, and, you know, first, he comes down for three. So just a three drop that can KO something with 25,000 power or less is disgusting. That's already enough power for a three drop. That's more than enough power for a three drop. Um, in fact, this card may be too strong, but the fact that once on the board, you can pay two energy to give it a 10,000 power, boosting it up to a 30K double strike and dual attack. Okay. So, um, there's just not really much to say about this card. This card is good almost any point of the game. You can play him on turn three to remove something, and then he gains plus 5,000 with Pan, and uh, you can swing with him. And he almost serves as a, uh, a, defend, a deadly defender in some cases because they have to remove this off the board. If they can't pop it, they need to kill it. Um, managing this guy is good. It's actually good that he kills himself because in the mirror match, you're going to need to resolve this dude's effect to get him off the board because he can just lead to game. Um, it's just really, really, really powerful. There's nothing really much I have to say about this. His effect isn't even hard to do because uh, the one blue, people have been running red blue for the longest time. Now, some mono red builds have been cropping up because of how good red is coming in set three or set six, but um, this thing is just monstrous it's gonna be great for pan players and it's just gonna be a solid asset card for red in the future next one this is the one that everybody's been complaining and moaning about um, <clears throat> it is Janimba agent of destruction um, it's a four drop critical auto activate the skill when you play this card from your hand uh, or warp at the end of the turn uh, if it's your turn choose up to one of your energy and switch to active mode then activate main um, send this card to the owner's warp, draw one card, and your opponent places three cards from the top of their deck into the drop area. So, um, a couple things to go over here. This is another tool for Janimba to use. Um, it's just another tool. Since it sends itself to warp and it activates its first auto whenever it's brought from hand or warp, um, baby Janimba, like the, the Janimba that not many people, too, too many people use as much anymore, um, it was definitely teched in during that, but um, can bring it out of the warp and it can still have the effect. So this is important for a couple of reasons. Depending on your momentum, first off, it gives you one more four drop to uh, warp with, or to uh, mill with, and that's going to help the consistency of the deck quite some bit, because there were times where, you know, the deck doesn't get its its Janimbas, the deck doesn't get, or uh, it's any of its four drop Janimbas, and then the deck can't mill you as effectively. This card coming into the game will, I think, assuredly secure Janimba milling you for five cards every turn once it gets to four or more energy. So that's actually very powerful. Um, the second part is this card definitely does allow some versatility because you're going to play it and it's going to replace itself. Much like all the super combos in the deck, Janimba doesn't really have draw power. All of its cards replace itself in hand, at least all of its best cards. Um, this card will replace it from hand. Dimension Magic can take a life and replace it from hand. Um, <clears throat> the Cells and the Unbreakables will replace themselves. Super Combos will replace themselves. So it's just one more card that just kind of floats. And <clears throat> when it comes to that, that's excellent. 
The other thing is it untaps an energy, allowing you to safely play it on four and keep energy open for your Dimension Magic or Sensu Beans. So this card is actually the Stone Cold Nuts when it comes to the versatility in the deck. And because it's 20k and critical, it still allows you to pressure on that as well. Now the thing that does not bode well for it is the fact that it is the only Janimba that does not have barrier and critical. So there are things that can happen, or barrier and deflect. So there are things that can happen to it. Um, it's not like these cards are just gonna be sitting there all the time, but against the Janimba deck, if you main Cold Bloodlust, if you main Preemptor Strike, these things don't do anything to a Janimba deck. But this is now a time for your opponent to play into these cards. So while these cards are good, if your opponent's playing yellow and you tap out all four cards to play this card and you get blusted, I'm sorry, dog. Like, it's just not your time. You're gonna tap out four, get lusted, only mill them for two that turn from your leader swing, and then if they can interact with this card on your turn, which they probably can because, or in their turn because it doesn't have barrier, then this card is gone, and you've essentially time locked yourself by using four energy to do nothing. So, um, the card is excellently, it's it's very very good, but they did trade utility for the ability to be interacted with. And I don't think a lot of people understand that that's one of the main things that makes Janimbo really rough. It, you can't interact with his cards. It's truly a clock. Next card, Lord Slug, Agent of Destruction. Um, three drop, like all of them except Janimbo are. <clears throat> Auto, when you play this card, your opponent chooses one card from their hand and places it into their drop area. Um, so it's a three, and that's a little less for a three. It's kind of like the Android 13 that's also a three drop. No, Android 14. But um, activate main once per turn. Green, choose one of Slug's army cards in your hand with a total energy cost of three or less and play it. Okay, so this is actually pretty funny. Um, I'd have to make another video about this to explain how good it is, but Lord Slug definitely got a very subtle but powerful boost with this card. And, and you know it. Like... There has to be another video on this because honestly, I'm trying to keep this one fairly short and there's too much to go into with just this video. Um, so all you need to know is that three energy drops the card from hand. It's a 20k, 3k. And then if it survives one turn, you can cheat out something from hand with one green. But it is an excellent linking piece to this deck. Um, the next card, Android 13, Agent of Destruction. Critical, three drop, activate main, pay two, choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards and KO it. Then your opponent chooses one card from their hand and place in the drop area. Okay. So, um, people have been complaining about this card, saying it's not good enough. Now, I don't think it's not good enough. This is a three drop that's a critical 20k. Right then and there, that's a very big beater to deal with. Potentially that early in the game. But the most important part for me is that once it stays on the field, if your opponent can't get rid of it, you can just whack something on the field, anything without barrier on the field, for 20k, or for just two energy. Two energy to do that is monstrous. That is a huge effect. But moreover, the fact that he also discards one card from your opponent's hand means that if you have your um if you have your dude, <clears throat> if you have your um Android 13, the Union Absorb one on board. This guy really is just another way to activate its effect. You know, you had him on board on turn three. Turn four, you Union Absorb. Turn five, you activate this guy's ability. And I know that involved a lot of tapping out, so it really kind of depends on your sparking, your negates, and your super combos. But you activate this dude, and your opponent will just drop chunks of their hand. So um, I think that's really cool. Not to mention the fact that, if you notice, it's not once per turn. So if you have the Union Absorb up, and you have this guy on the board, and they have two creatures on board, you just you just activate two, you discard cards. Activate two, you discard cards. It's actually pretty savage. Um, now the last card in this sweep is Bojack, Agent of Destruction. When you play this card, choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards, ignoring barrier, and switch it to rest mode. Activate main two. If this card is in rest mode, your opponent's or choose your opponent's leader card. Switch it to rest mode, and it cannot be switched to active mode until the end of your opponent's turn. That's actually kind of crucial. Um, just in case, I mean, you don't realize that your your leader card, late game, mid to late game, depending on the deck, um, it's an extra draw every turn. It's a plus one every turn, and it is un it's unscrewable damage. Like you swing, and sometimes unless it's in a crucial situation, nobody's gonna just automatically 
negate your leader swing. They might try to combo over because most people don't invest in their leader swing, but your leader swing is where you get a chance to be sneaky. It's where you get a chance to sneak in that chomp. It's where you get a chance to really pressure, especially if your leader boosts itself. And this card has the ability to take your leader out of the game unless you have an effect that draws without swinging. So I don't think this card should be estimated or underestimated. And I don't think it should be forgotten that it slides directly in with the curve and play of its archetype. So um, there we go. I hope you guys liked the video. Remember to like, comment, subscribe. Um, I'm gonna be back with the new power booster cards as well as the new archetype that I'm about to go into. Um, so I hope you guys stay tuned. Help me grow this channel. Like I said, I'm trying to uh, end up with 1,000 subscribers by my birthday, which is June 2nd, by the way. So help me get there. I love making videos for this channel, and I love the feedback you all guys, you all guys, Jesus, you guys all give me. Thanks. You guys have a great day. Peace.